Okay, so let's talk about functions. So what are functions? It's a routine or block of code that gets executed once it's called. So let me show you what I mean. Functions in MATLAB are of two types. It's either built in, meaning that you can call it such as the mean of the following numbers or the average of the following numbers. So mean is a built in function by MATLAB and it's at your disposal. So you can use it whenever you want. And to make sure that there is a function of that name in MATLAB, all you have to do is type in help that function. If a documentation as such pops up in front of you, it means that it exists and this is the documentation for it. Okay. And if not, so let's say help this function does not exist. So this function called this function does not exist clearly does not exist and to see why click enter and MATLAB will tell you I don't have this function it's not found okay now let's go back to help mean you can see that MATLAB also suggests other functions of similar I don't know, type or category so the median you click on median you get the description for the median you hit standard deviation or STD get a description on that STD stands for standard deviation and so on. So MATLAB is being generous with us. It's giving us suggestions for related functions, if you will. Now, let's say you want to have your own function. You want to be fancy and I don't know, you want to have your own function. So all you have to do is right click here on the current folder, new file, either script or function, both will do. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click function and I have a function for me to create. So let's call it my first function as such. Double clicking that, I'll get a script. Now, as you can see, the format is important because that's how a function should look like. So the name of the function is my first function. As you can see, MATLAB automatically called my input arguments as input underscore args and similarly output underscore args for the outputs. Note that a function could have no input as such one input, so input one, two inputs, input two, and so forth. For the meantime, let's say I want to take a function with two inputs, and I don't know, we'll see as we go. Let's say my function, my first function, takes in two inputs, and note that the inputs could have different types. So I don't need to come and explicitly mention the type of the input in contrast to C or C++ where you have to explicitly say, oh, this input is int or this one is string or I don't know what. No, in MATLAB, you just give it an input and you implicitly know that this input called, let's say, um, name is a text and another input, which is a number x1, x2, right? Three inputs or it could be matrices as long as you don't do an error, as we'll see right now. So a function could also not have the end keyword. So this is also good. No error will happen. And yeah, that's basically it. So, so let's say my first function takes in three parameters where the first parameter is a name to print. So let's print the name as such. So DISP stands for display. So help DISP display array it also works for strings or characters so display ahmad as such you have it printed right there for you so let's say display a number you get the number display an array it's right there and display a matrix it's right there okay so whether i pass name as a text a char or an array no error will be thrown here right now let's compare if x1 greater than x2 um, print x1 is greater than x2 else and so if this condition is true I'm going to enter this block of code else I'm going to enter this block of code let's do something like this if x1 is x2 or equal to x2 display x1 is equal to x2 else we are sure that x1 is less than x2 right so let's call the function my first function let's say i want to print test case 
The second argument is x1, which is 4. And the third one is, let's say, 2. So I should be able to see, test case, on the first line. And on the second line, I should be able to see x1 is greater than x2. And there you go. Let's say I accidentally entered a string right here. MATLAB actually understands test as a number, which is greater than x1. Okay, that's all I have to say about functions. Um, one more thing in case you want to print a description for your own function. Let's say I go ahead and type in help my first function. There is no help for my first function. Note that MATLAB did not tell me that this function is not found because it's smart enough to look in my current folder and find it, right? So it just tells me there's no help. I don't have a description to give you. Well, if you write a function and you would like to have a description, you can do that as such. Right below the function, you can insert the help you would like to print. So let's say this is my first function that does so and so. Type in help and there you have the description. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, let's say your function does not take any inputs right let's say i have another function you can you can easily go ahead without having to go here and create a function you can click on the plus sign if given that the editor is already open and write another function from scratch so let's say your function does not take any inputs so this is my second function and does not even produce outputs click command s or hit save as such you will get this window which tells you you're going to save this file in this folder called 00.basics. All you have to do is click save and you will have it here for you. Now if I go ahead and call it, note that I did not open and close brackets as such even though it's the same thing, right? Because there's no inputs. And let's say this function is meant for testing. And there you go. So. A similar MATLAB function is the CLC, where it only clears the command window. It has no inputs and it returns no outputs. Well, let's see if it returns an output. So no outputs. It gave me an edit. Okay, other functions that do return outputs in MATLAB is the min or max function. So let's say I have an array for minus 1, 10, 100, and 0. And I would like to find the max and at which location it's located. So if I go ahead and do this, a is equal to max a, I get 100 because the maximum element is 100. Well, let's say I'm not satisfied with this. I also like the position. I would like to know where the position of 100 is. Well, max comes actually with two outputs. So let's say a b is max a, right? What is a? It's 100. And what is b? It's 4. Why 4? Because 100 is sitting at the fourth position. Let's say I would like to extract the min instead of a max. What is a should be minus 1 and what is b should be 2, right? Because min is sitting at the second position. You can go ahead here and peek at the workspace. You see that a is indeed minus 1 and b is 2, right? So a and b. So that's basically it. That's all you need to know to start creating your beautiful functions in MATLAB. That's basically it. In the next one, we're going to be talking about plots, 2D and 3D, beautiful and amazing MATLAB plots. I'll see you then.